Bro, listen. Never in my life associated the word boring with baseball. We know, we know what's up. Me? Yeah. Famous? Yeah. And I'm like giddy over there smiling like, holy, I mean, we're about to win this shit. Did anyone give you crap? Give me a good like host story. You know, I'm like, I'm not picking it up. No, we both love the game. We, we talk about it every day. Can't get off baseball. Having some popcorn, you're fooling around your phone. I'd have to weigh a mine for three hours. Like, but hang on, because it's about to be a wild ride. All right. There's nobody I'd rather be talking to right now than Lucas Giolito on the planet. Planet Earth, Galaxy, and as a bonus, Gordo from the Play Tessie podcast. Hi, Lucas. Awesome. How are you? What's going on, guys? That's Lucas. Gordo, say hello. What's up? Nobody All I'd right. rather be talking to than Rob Bradford. Oh, uh, see, the PM, steal your line. Yeah, PM, come on. You owe me yeah. $5. Thank you. Um, one of these two are Major League Baseball players. Um, so, but, what, but also... Gordo, Lucas, uh, Gordo just got married. I went to his wedding. It was excellent oh, congratulations, wedding. Congratulations, man. Full Appreciate on, it. Thank you. Full on. My first full on Jewish wedding where I held up the chair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he was lifting me up and down. They play the horror. Big, strong oh, yeah. Rob Bradford. Yeah. And I'm trying to think. I think I've been to maybe one or two Jewish weddings, but I went to a ton of bar mitzvahs when I was a kid. <laughs> no, <they> do, really? <laughs> so yeah, like a lot of the chair and, and all that. What was the best bar mitzvah you went to? Cause you probably went to a famous person's bar mitzvah, right? No, <laughs> I, I never went to a famous person's bar mitzvah. I don't think man, I can't just like my buddies in, in middle school. Yeah. Who's the most, who's the, when you were growing up, who was the most uh, who was the most famous person you you saw? Because you 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 mingled among that uh, as you said when you live on the set of Curb Your Enthusiasm, you basically it has to be somebody. My girlfriend and I watched this uh, thing on Netflix last night uh, about a guy that was he wrongfully convicted of murder, and his alibi was that he was at a Dodgers game. Dodgers game, that's great and- one. Yeah, he, his alibi is at a Dodgers game, and they had to go and find footage from an episode of Curb that they shot at the Dodgers game that he happened to be in, and it helped his defense. That was I, I pretty you, crazy. I thought you were going to say that like you were sitting in the row in front of him. <laughs> no, no. That was a great documentary. I love that. That was so yeah. good. Yeah, but you asked like the most famous people yeah. that I got to uh, – um, I mean, I probably have to say Samuel L. Samuel L. Jackson. That's uh, that's that's a great one. Yeah, that's a I biggie. Got to, that's a I got biggie. to I got to meet him one time because um my dad used to play golf with him. Really? Yeah they they would like golf every once in a while um because they were members of the same country club in in L. A. Did I would imagine that he. Always golfed with the like that scally cap. What is it? The Roo hat. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the kangaroo logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Backwards. Yeah. Yeah, he was he I want to say when I met him, he was probably wearing one of those. Okay. Can I, I tell just you met him that... in the parking lot once? That's it. Oh right. <laughs> well, listen, it's he was super he was so nice though, and he gave me like you know, I said I was like a Star Wars fan, and he he gave me uh I gifted me a Mace Windu lightsaber. I was sick. Wow. See, see this, you downplayed that story so much. And then it, you culminated with, with Samuel L. Jackson gifting you a lightsaber. I mean, well done. Like, well done. <laughs> Pretty good. How old were you at the time? I was probably like 13. Uh, that's, do you have it? Do you still have it? I have I it's probably in storage at my parents' house. I don't I don't have I don't think I have any of like my childhood possessions with me. I move around way too much. Okay. All right. That's fair. But as long as we know it's safe. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the so the they did you uh so this is but this is perfectly segueing to I don't know what, but <laughs> But you talk about like watching Netflix. Have you thought about? I think now that it's done, 
I know that I've thought about this, about like how this thing with Netflix is going to land about, do I really, do I really want to be in anything? Eh, I don't know. You know, have you, have you thought, boy, was that a thing? Did he, cause I would imagine maybe there was probably as the Netflix thing went, you sort of rode the roller coaster of, Oh, this is cool. Uh, maybe it's not, Oh, this is cool. You know, it's, it's different for everybody. Yeah. Like every single guy in the clubhouse had their own opinion on it. Um, the good thing is that like the production team, like Greg was great. Uh, he was, you know, the director yeah. producer. Um, the, what I thought was great was like the level of communication was there from their end where they were like, Hey, if you want nothing to do with this, don't sign the release and let us know, like, you don't want to be mic'd up. Don't want to be on camera. Like, and you know, you'll just be like in the background maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're into it, then like you can sign this thing where you get to be like a main character and, um, you know, you do more, interviews you do more stuff where you're like mic'd up or whatever and i think um i mean i was one of those guys like i was cool with it i think it's it's good exposure um you know for the game and and what we you know do throughout a year you know the human element i always like kind of expressing like the human element in sports uh, i think it's come off well in some of the other things that have come out on netflix and and obviously HBO they've had hard knocks for years and yeah. that's a that's like my favorite sports documentary for sure um I try and watch it every year um and then Netflix has done like the quarterback the wide well, receiver they did, one they did last chance you I mean this group last did... chance you was incredible yeah that was that was Greg's show right. um so yeah I mean I I'd watched pretty much I'd watch everything Greg had done uh like documentary wise for Netflix and sports other than uh the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders one and then my girlfriend and I watched that during the season. Yeah. That was good too. No, they and, and they're so you know, good. They were legit around I mean, this is it's a whole nother thing, but so I'm glad to hear that you because I think that your your story last this past year is an interesting. There, everyone has an interesting story, and I'm really fascinated how they piece it together. Because there are so many. It's not just oh, here's the win loss total, and that's it. You, there's, as I said, every time anyone said this about the the Red Sox Netflix thing, they go, oh well, you know, they're an 81 and 81 team. How are you gonna? They made a JUCO team fascinating, right? It's not about the wins and the losses. It's about, yeah. right? Yeah, I agree. I think that a lot of it's going to be leaning more into like the human element. I mean, with Last Chance, you you see it. You know, you see what the kids are going through, and you know what led them up to g attending that school and playing football there, and what's after, and you know, dealing with things outside of necessarily just the football field. Obviously, it, you know, you're following along their season, how the team's doing. But there's like a lot more to the story. Um, I think like in my case, it's going to be kind of like rehab, you know, what it's like being a being a player on on the team that's like not on the team, you know, you're, you're rehabbing all year. Uh, so it's a lot different experience for me than, you know, Jaron Duran, who played almost every single game. Um, and you just get to see like, you know, what guys do at the field what you know what they do outside of the field um so i think it'll be pretty interesting do you have um, do you, do they, you have do you have a go to like without no it doesn't have to be a salacious or anything like but for you like um you remember a moment you're like oh man i'm glad they were there for that that was that was great hmm i don't know if i can think of anything off the top of my head um, I well, think there were some funny, I think there were some funny moments in the clubhouse that were caught on camera. I don't know. Again, like I'm not in the editing room, so I don't know how they're going to put it together. Uh, there was one time where Liam was wearing an interesting outfit post game celebrating a win, um, that they got footage of. So we'll see if that makes it in. What what a what a professional tease that is! Like an interesting outfit. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
it's, 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 I don't want to like spoil anything. No, you know? no, I, I listen. Because I don't know. It, it might be there. It might not. I, you know, I don't know how many people are listening to this podcast and be checking the show out. So, well, you know, I don't want to take any. Uh, do they tell you? Do they tell, tell you? Do yeah. they tell you like what you can and can't say? Like, do they do they try to make sure that you guys don't say too much about what's going to be in it? Honestly, no. Greg never mentioned anything to me about like, oh, don't you know, keep this under wraps or no. I haven't heard anything like that. So, yeah, I just like that's like my own thing, you know. Like, I don't want to necessarily spoil what could no. be a funny a funny moment on the don't show. Don't tell anyone about the Tyler Heineman Magic Act. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> so the Tyler Heineman Magic Act, we actually got mad at them because they that was like their week off. They were there for all of spring training except oh. for like one one week. And the Tyler Heineman Magic Act, they weren't there for. Oh, um, no. So we gave them a lot of shit for that. Uh, well, I honestly think that they were, and I didn't go in with the intention of having this be the Netflix conversation, but whatever. Um, they were there for a lot of like, they were, there was there were stretches where they nailed where they were there. They were there a lot early, like right a ton early. And even at the All Star game, holy mackerel, good choice because you have Duran, Duran's MVP, his family's there, like all of that. You nail that. Uh, the one time they weren't there was the Colorado day where Cora signs his contract and everyone wants to fight everybody and and all that stuff. They weren't there. For oh that. yeah. Yeah, but I wasn't you, there for that either. See, no, I know. I'm saying. I was like, that's that's one thing I did mention on the show. It's like, you know, I I signed over here um, to be like a big part of this team, right? Big part of the starting rotation, throw a lot of innings, and then I'm out for the whole year. So there are a lot of times throughout the year where it's like I felt like a ghost. You know, I'm like I'm there, I'm here, but I'm not, I'm not like going through the shit with the team you know what i mean yeah it, it's it's a and this is my first time ever doing that and it, it was very very strange for sure uh di very difficult at times like mentally and emotionally but you know whenever i always try to like see uh try to look forward and, and see like things from a positive light you know i'm getting a lot of things right getting a lot of things ready to go for next year yeah well i mean that's the thing is it now and we're gonna talk about sort of turn the page and and that's the great thing for you now it's like okay i'm just like everybody else but i do think you know from my perspective is Prevetta still calling you no <laughs> no, all right. no all right uh from my perspective like you were there i mean you were the part of the team that was it was you know i know that that's how you felt and maybe not making every road trip you didn't feel that way but still i'm, I'm building you up I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm gonna feel a lot better uh, when I get to spring training next year, and I'm you know throwing the ball and taking the ball every five days and uh, doing everything I can to to help the guys around me and be able to lead by example instead of just trying to like you know talk about stuff. I I enjoy talking. I enjoy talking about the game. Um, I enjoy watching and observing, but that's not my leadership style um maybe if the time is right uh i will have something to say but i generally like to lead by example and and just try and be a good teammate um so this year i i tried to be a good teammate but there is that weird aspect where you know you're being a teammate but you're not really involved Mm. uh like the other guys are because they're they're putting the uniform on and going out there and putting their all on the field and you know i'm trying to put my all in the training room it's a little bit different well i'm gordo before you whatever you got to say gordo like i do have this off off of what you just said lucas is that this is a cliche question but did you going through this did it make you a different leader slash teammate slash professional baseball player. Because like when you're in the grind, when like you have been for your entire adult life, you're going, you're going, you're going. And now you're almost stay, taking a step back and say, Oh, well, I didn't realize it looked exactly like this. You know, did it make you look at things a little bit different? Yeah. I think that I have 
I think I got so used to it um, that now, and this will kind of take effect more once we get going again in spring training. I, it's like a newfound appreciation for what I get to do for a living. Um, You know, it kind of, it's like kind of brings me back to like when I was first drafted. Right. And it's like, Oh my God, I get to go play professional baseball. Like this is freaking awesome. And I think that I'm looking forward to having a lot of those feelings again. Um, you know, the last two seasons for me, I had ups and downs and especially the last couple months of 2023 was brutal, uh, performance wise, mentally. So, uh, it, it was that thing where like baseball was very much, you know, I was being traded around and moved around and it was very much feeling baseball is very much feeling like a job and a business. Um, whereas having all this time off, like I truly miss competing. Mm. Um, I truly miss like getting out on the mound in front of thousands of people, you know, with the team behind me and, you know, trying to beat the other side and, and win games. Um, you know, I was watching a lot of our games this year uh, with a little bit of sadness of like, damn, I wish I could be out there helping, you know? Uh, so that's what I look forward to that this kind of like, newfound appreciation uh i just so look forward to competing again gordo what do you got so like you said that so much of your work this year and probably all your work was in the training room so how you know you're in a new city new team new teammates and now like a completely new like you're you're the guy who posts every fifth day you're the guy who's approaching 200 innings every single year so how much different obviously you talk about you know, not being able to go out there and compete with your guys, but how much different does it make just in general, your life feel being, you know, kind of thrown into a new city again. And, you know, now you're not able to compete. Like, does it impact the rest of your life? Like now you're not preparing every fifth day for a start, like no, no MLB, the show to, to prepare uh-huh. for, for, for hitters. Like just how different, how much, how much does it impact the rest of your life? Um, you feel like a piece of your life is missing to be honest. Like it's, it's, it's weird. Uh, it's like you're doing something for so long and you're used to it. And that's part of your routine every single day. And, um, you know, you're always looking forward to your next start or whatever it may be. And you just don't have it Dude, There's like this emptiness, um, which for me, I feel like some days I handled it fine, handled it. Okay. You know, I go, I get, try and stay focused, get my work in, try and be a good teammate, you know, whatever, um, I can do. And then other days you, you know, you can kind of fall into more like negative feelings. And so, um, luckily I feel that I have an amazing support system. Uh, you know, my girlfriend here, Madalena, she's wonderful. Uh, my family, you know, my parents live relatively close, um, and especially the organization, um, you know, the medical staff working with Brad and, and all the guys in the training room and, and, uh, the guys in the strength room. Um, you know, I feel like, uh, there was never a sense of, um, you know, the, the rehab, cause I'm not the, I wasn't the only one, right. Mm. Uh, rehabbing all year. It's like, there, there wasn't a sense of like, oh, these guys are kind of like an afterthought, like just go down to Florida. We'll see it, you know, next year. It, they did a wonderful job of making sure you still still felt appreciated and and special uh, within the clubhouse. So uh, I'm super appreciative of that. Yeah, I love the you 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 saying about how you felt like a piece of your existence was missing, but now you get it back. That's the good thing. Yeah. And 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 you know, Lucas, I was looking at. Um, I don't know why it popped up. It was, and I don't know if you saw it, but it was a, uh, it was a clip from when the White Sox were in the playoffs, of of the the game presentation, the stadium. Mm-hmm. You you were mic'd up, and oh, the blackout game, the blackout game, right? Yeah, right. That was postseason, right? Postseason. Yeah, that was yeah. postseason of like twenty one. Yeah, but you know, I thought it was so awesome. Sometimes 
we get a chance to just to see like we think you guys are like oh hey listen i'm a i'm just zeroed in man but you were just saying isn't this awesome this is awesome right i'm yeah i'm, par I'm paraphrasing but yeah i, I wasn't i wasn't playing that day so i got to be like a fan along with everybody else um, it was great it was great yeah yeah that was that was a really cool game and we ended up winning that game i think it was the only game we won of that series but it was uh pretty electric for sure yeah but that's the, that when we're talking about i just came from citizens bank park and city field and i don't think people understand like that i understand like how that feeling that feeling that this is and yeah fenway's like this sometimes right when Derek White is wearing his baseballs and a boring shirt and holding up the trophy, like of course that that's <laughs> you gonna feel the vibes. But everyone goes crazy for it. Everyone goes. It's how they it's gonna did, be a tradition. It, can I just vent for a second? Were you at you were at that game, right, Lucas? Like the the Blue Jays game where Romy gets the hit. Yep. Duran walks it off, and and right before Romy gets a hit, they're making the pitching change. Here's comes the comeback. They show Derek White. The Celtics are there. He's got. He, with baseballs yep. and boring shirt on the jumbotron, how can they not play that every single game? I mean, <laughs> like, I mean it is it is it, it could have been their grimace. It could have been their grimace. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just that's my own that's my own issue. Um, but th my point is is that like you live that life, right? It seems weird that it was with the White Sox, you know. It seems so like a world away, but you live that life. I mean, this is and what we're seeing these fan bases and these players go through now. I would imagine, like, you want to tell the young Red Sox players this is what it's like, but until you go through it, I don't know. Maybe I'm overstating it. Are you talking about like the excitement? Yeah, like, just like the scene. Like you're like special. I mean, postseasons like. You ask any baseball player that's played in the postseason, it's different, man. It is it is incredible. Um yeah, I mean that's that's like why we play. Playoff baseball is the fucking best. It really is. <laughs> so it's like it's all sorry if I'm not supposed to swear. No, I love this like that's why I it's love encouraged. Um, it's encouraged. Yeah. It's encouraged. So it's, 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 you you just want you just want two two baseballs and boring shirts. Uh nice. go ahead, continue. <laughs> yeah, so it's like the season is so long and it's, it's grindy, you know? Um, so everyone's going to have their, their good days and bad days. And, um, you know, maybe someone's slumping, they're not in a good mood and, and it's just kind of like this, you know, you're kind of riding the wave, but the, it's like, once you get to the postseason, it's like all hands on deck and it's the most exciting time ever. For everybody, you know, the players, the fans, everybody involved. And um, and so I we had on um Brian Abraham, the farm director, the other day, and I've proposed this idea to him before. I said that you should take some minor leaguers and you should buy them tickets to Citizens Bank Park, whatever. Buy them tickets to like I saw that Marcelo Meyer went to the Padres game the other day, right? Like I don't I would absolutely do this. And it doesn't even have to be Mario Leaguers. It can be any player. But do we, do you do, is this a terrible, I think it's a good idea. I mean. No, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went to uh, the World Series when the Braves won to watch Max pitch. They, that was, a, they won that night. Like that was, that was the last one. Um, and, I mean, that's kind of another side of it too. Like I've always enjoyed pitching on the road because you get to shut the other fans up. And I mean, that was like, uh, it's called Minute Maid Park, right? In Houston. Yes. Is it still Minute Maid? Yeah. yeah. So um, I played there a bunch of times, been there a bunch of times, played off baseball there. Like we got our ass kicked there and it was so loud and crazy. And then, you know, I went to this World Series game. There's the other, it was like the, it went the other way. Like this place is like dead quiet in the later innings, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's cool too. As a player, I think it's cool. If you're like rooting for the Astros and you go to the game, that's not fun for you. But uh, yeah, I, 
I I support your Thank proposition you. there. I think it's I think you know young players just like being around the atmosphere and seeing how exciting it is. I don't know. There's also something to be said. Um, I think there's something to be said about like your first time experiencing it, like you're in the dugout or you're on the field. Like that's pretty cool too. Um, yeah, I oh, I, I don't I, know. I, yeah, I've had a I had a weird track. I had a kind of weird track. My first time in the playoffs is during COVID. I know. Like my you, first, but you pitched my, your ass off. Congratulations. Yeah, you shoved. Yeah. Yeah. In Oakland, we went to Oakland and, you know, we're in the Coliseum, which is massive and there's nobody there. It was like, this, it was very, very, that whole season was very weird, but it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, but well, I see both sides of it. I get it. But when you went, when you, okay. When you went to Atlanta, no, where, where was it? You went, you went to Atlanta, Houston, right? Houston, Houston. I'm sorry. Well, when you went as a fan, was it what you thought? It would be. Was it more? Um, it was. It was what I at that point is what I thought it would be because I I played in the playoffs, especially I played against Houston in the playoffs the year before. Oh, okay. So the Houston, um, the the first time you played, you you went to a, a postseason game. Was when with fans was in that game in Houston. I think the first time I ever went to a postseason game was like in two thousand and. Two or two thousand three Angels versus Giants. Really? Yeah. World my Series. dad took me. My dad took me to one of the World Series games uh, in Anaheim. It was weird. Samuel Jackson bought you a <laughs> bought you a Sunday. It was great. <laughs> yes, I was very privileged. <laughs> was that? But I mean, how old were you? Like you were like two. No man, I'm oh. old. I'm old for baseball now. Uh, Rob, I, even I was like six in 2002. Yeah, I was. Uh, Spent like ten, eight. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. I, I listen. I live in the present. Oops. Okay. Just let me live in the present. Uh, Gordo, I got. I got more question, but or more. Co- I don't like to say co- question. More conversation. What do you got? Mm-hmm. Anything? Yeah, I do. So on the topic of playoffs, so we've in the Red Sox world, we we keep listening to Alex Cora, Craig Breslow, Sam Kennedy. They're all saying, you know, we're excited to build this team up this offseason, get them win the division next year and get to the postseason next year. How much does hearing stuff like that excite you? And like, how much does thinking about pitching in the playoffs at Fenway for the Red Sox? Like, how much does that just like? get you excited to just get back on the field and get going. I mean, it doesn't even take all that. Like it was like being in Fenway and my first time experiencing Yankees versus Red Sox in Fenway. Uh, I was already like, dude, I just can't wait for next year. Can I get a time machine already? <laughs> like that was electric and that's regular season. That was like early regular season. <laughs> yeah. I remember, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the idea of bolstering our team, getting better, the guys we already have, I think they're the young, I mean, the young guys, they're going to get better. Um, and then, you know, making a legitimate playoff push, playing in the playoffs, pitching in Fenway uh, for the Red Sox, you know, a historic franchise return back to the playoffs after what it's, I, I saw it's been like a drought. It's considered a drought, a playoff drought now. Oh yeah, right? it's, yes. Three years it's, counts. It counts. Yeah. It counts. It's basically, in like it's tumbleweeds. It's, it's it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean for sure. So, you know, that's. I mean, but that's good though. Like you, the fan base and the organization like should expect a good winning culture year in and year out. Like that's okay. Um, you know, it reminds me of like. It reminds me of like uh one thing Greg was asking me uh. Uh, for the Netflix stuff, it was like, you know, isn't doesn't it suck that like, <laughs> you know, fans are like mean to you guys? I think he asked in a more eloquent way than <laughs> I'm saying it. It was like, doesn't it suck? Doesn't it suck that like fans are like mean to you guys or whatever? You get like messages when you don't do well. And it's like, 
not really because like it me i didn't do my job like we sucked i sucked like we're supposed to win like you know that's what, a point you know what i love about the netflix guys they were all like super nice guys but they really ha- they weren't baseball guys which was i'm not saying that as a negative thing because a lot of that stuff that you're talking about it was so sincere and i think that's what makes it even better you know mm-hmm. it was like hey this this travel really sucks well if you knew you know yeah of course it sucks oh man all this these people booing sucks yeah because that's what happens when you don't play well yeah <laughs> doesn't happen i get it you know the the juco team in la doesn't get the booze you know but but I, I I sincerely mean this as a good thing for this Netflix. You just brought that up, so yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody handles like criticism stuff differently. I just think I, I've been doing this long enough that it's like, and my career has been like this. Like I've had really good years, really bad years. Like, and I mean, it's pretty simple. Like when I've performed well, all the fans love me. It's awesome, wonderful. Like you can do no wrong when you perform badly. They want, they want nothing to do with you. They think you suck because you are sucking. So it is what it is. Like, you're not going to have fans that are like, oh, well, he's going through a hard time. It's like, no, do your job. So I'm cool with that now. I think maybe it took me a little bit of time to realize that when I was younger, but I'm cool with that now. Like, that's how it is. So you get recognized in Boston. I mean, what was it like this year mm-hmm. in Boston? No, never. No, uh, a not little a bit. Yeah, but I did a lot of like autographs in the in the parking lot where you know I sign it and then they ask me who I am. Like I didn't have I I didn't that was a, that was uh that brought me back, a, that brought me back a lot because that's not my experience in Chicago. <laughs> really, really, yeah. <laughs> how do they how do they ask you for your autographs if they don't know your name? Well, it's just like there will be a couple people that know, so it's like you you know whether it be when you pull up pregame or after the game, if, you know, I don't have too much going on, I can just, you know, go sign a little bit and interact with the fans a little bit. And, um, you know, there'll be a couple people that are like, Oh, Giolito, Gio, whatever. So yep, yep, I'm coming and you start signing and then more people show up and you're signing their balls and their hats. And then they're like, what's your name? Who are you? <laughs> hey, I'm Garrett Whitlock. Nice to meet you. Yeah, wait, do you respond like your full name? I or? wish I no, I wish I wish I had more of that troll in me to like mess around <laughs> like that. But no, I'm always just like, oh, I'm I'm Lucas. You'll see me next <laughs> year. Don't worry. I'm Lucas. Um, all right, let's let's do an exercise. Gordo, you're gonna appreciate this one. I'm a guy named Max. My last name happened to be Freed. <laughs> Tell me, give me your pitch. Um, he's gonna ask you. He's gonna ask you. What you think? Go, I haven't already talked to him about it, right? That's crazy. Yeah, of course you have, right? <laughs> so, so uh, like, but but I feel like we're doing. I, I think feel like we're doing a service. We're workshopping even more. So, I you do like this exercise. Your, you can already, if you want, you can just repeat what you said to him. I'm just giving you an opportunity. No, I can't do all that, man. No. I, I, I'll, I'll say like, don't you want to? You know, we we played high school ball together, and and we always talked about how cool it would be if we'd be on the same team, um, in the big leagues. When we we, we legitimate conversations we would have when we were seventeen. So let's you know this is this is the shot to make it a reality right here. That's it's there's let's nothing go. really. I mean, Gordo, you tell me. There's nothing really that needs to be more said than that. It's simple. It's effective. It's pulling on the heartstrings. It's all of it. What better? What better to do it together than to experience winning in Boston, making the postseason in Boston oh. together for the first time? Oh, together, full circle, <laughs> full circle. There you go. Can't argue. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I think he would fit in great. Obviously, I think that the need is there. You know, you look at the starting pitcher depth chart, you don't see a lot of LHP. Um, so, and you know, he, in my opinion, he's, he's the best, most consistent left-handed starting pitcher. Um, so, you know, I think it's a good fit. Obviously also, I'm a little okay. biased. Okay. So <laughs> I agree with you. You, you, Personally. so you, 
you've sold you've sold max on boston like five max i'm done i'm hey what i'll play i'll play for whatever just make me an offer well here's the deal max is max uh is going to have a lot of teams interested in yeah i mean let's be real there's going to be a lot of money thrown around it's going to be it's going to be very interesting how that plays out um do, do i hope that the red Sox end up being the best fit and the best choice and you know from you know different angles of course but uh that's going to be up to him at the end of the day is he a new balance guy I don't think so. Oh, I was good because you know, for 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 remember Gordo, the oh, Shohei Atani is clearly going to come to Boston because New Balance is in Boston. <laughs> the New Balance CEO, it's going to be the difference maker right there. <laughs> Can, have you ever, oh. how, how many do you, do you do private jets at all? It's all right if you do. Um, no, I don't. Okay, well, say I got to I got to do it once or twice, maybe. Well, that's it. Yeah. Oh, I've I've done it twice. I mean, oh, I remember. Okay, one was All Star Game in 2019. Um, I don't, I don't remember who. I think maybe Abreu got it or or someone. Um, and then another time was when I was coming back from when I was coming back from COVID. Uh, in the 2020 two season i was coming back from covid and um tony la Russa actually got me one for a little quick flight from chicago to kansas city so i could make my first start um so i wouldn't like be flying a commercial like right after having covid and potentially i i don't know with how how that hey, works all i know once you do it you just but that was a that was a baller move by Tony. Yeah, Big time. it was that's so, super nice. So, so nice. Yeah, he's he's a wonderful man. The it's it's all all I, I've done it twice, and all you can think of is how can I make make enough money to never fly anywhere else again or any way else again. Rob, the what, reason where I, are you flying? Where do you find private? When are you flying private? Well, Gordo, let me tell you the story. Yeah, it's please. so ridiculously expensive. It's not. I'm not flying. It's not. I actually so. My we had our wedding anniversary, and I was like, "Oh, you know what would be cool is if I get a private jet for my wife to fly her somewhere." And I found out how much it was. It was no, <laughs> it, it was like thirty grand to go to Florida. Like, yeah, yeah, no, not happening. Um, anyway, my stories are boring, but um, but the reason I bring it up is because what I vow to you is that the baseballs and boring will fund a private jet for you to go pick up Max Freed. Shohei Itani style, it, just for the fun of tracking. <laughs> we'll track the plane. Track the plane. <laughs> so, I, let it be said. Let it be done. You. That's your third time. Go pick. I'll make sure to. I'll connection. make sure to mention. I'll make sure to mention that to him. <laughs> that's the seller. Hey, that's we, how you we, close the we, deal. We're we, we trying to use all the ammunition we have, right? So there you go. You can only do so much. Uh well, Lucas, you've been very generous with your time. I do want to. I do want to ask. We've had. We talked about a lot of stuff. And I re, and I always enjoy talking with you. But I do want to catch up on how you're doing. Um, I know that you're you're still here up in Massachusetts, but you're going down to Fort Myers for the off season. Mm-hmm. Um, just like where are you at? What's going on? Yeah, progressing very well. Um, you know, I've been like right on schedule. Uh, not too much to report on. Like my elbow feels great. Shoulder feels great. Uh, just progressing along, uh, you know, following the, the calendar set by uh, Brad. Um, can, can you tell that story? I know what we talked about before, but Gordo probably hasn't heard it about the, what Brad Pearson, who is, I don't know what his title is now. Head, head he's per- a v- VP. VP of sports medicine now. I'm not really sure. Yeah, he uh, went. To I might the, be a little off. He went to the Harvard of Alden Street, Springfield College, where I went. Also, the big three they call it: me, Brad Pearson, and John Cena. Um, oh, yeah. So, but you were talking about something about strengthening his shoulder that he had implemented with Rick Porcello. I'm going to misrepresent it. Could he just sort of repeat that story? Yeah, yeah, real quick. I, yeah. It, it's uh, basically. 
he saw, um, I don't know if it's similarities or just like things in the shoulder, but he said when he was able to get his hands on Rick for an extended period of time, I don't know if he was rehabbing something, he was on the IL, um, or even if it was while he was actively pitching, they were working on uh, getting his shoulder like more motion, more strength and more stability um cuz Brad had noticed something that he really wanted to hammer out but it takes a long period of time to get it right and um so he did it with Rick and and it ended up working great and he felt great and then the following year he won the Cy Young what science so, it's science so i'm that's like kind of you know it's like a, i don't know not necessarily a joke but i hope it's not a joke uh, that's you know something I talk with Brad about. It's like, all right, you got me on the Rick Porcello program. You know, we're getting the shoulder shoulder right. Uh, so let's go ahead and go win that Cy Young next year. Everybody, so, yeah. everybody who's everybody who's listening, you're welcome. You're welcome. S- second year in Boston wouldn't be the first time. Yep, Rick yep. Porcello. Yeah, there Rick you Porcello go. First, Lucas Giolito second. Okay, but those of you that are listening, like, root for it. Don't bet on it, please, because. <laughs> If I don't win the Cy Young, I don't want a bunch of Venmo requests and Instagram DMs blowing my ass up. Leave are me you alone. gonna <laughs> Are you gonna send them the signed jerseys, Brent Rooker style? You see that? You guys see uh, that? I've seen some of the. He does some funny stuff on social media. I I I, I don't know about the jerseys. What has he done with the jerseys? Some guy did did what you said. He like DM'd Rooker after he missed a parlay or something, and. Sent some nasty shit and Rooker signed a jersey, wrote a wrote a message, don't bet on me again, and sent him the jersey. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to handle it. Yeah. But by, by the way, the fact that you asked I, I, I don't make your Venmo public for first, first of all. <laughs> I didn't I don't I didn't think it is. I, I you know what? I gotta double I gotta look into that more. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll scrub we'll sc- let me know. We'll scrub it if just in case. We don't want people vet I mean if you want people to Venmo <laughs> you can. I don't No, I, I don't want people to Venmo me. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Are you look, look at Sheila, you know, call it be Venmo me. <laughs> Are you okay if people say nasty shit if they're giving you money instead of requesting it? No, no. I'd <laughs> no. rather I'd I'd rather make my salary. I'm more than content with that. It, I don't I don't want money from fans. I don't want to <laughs> like that 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 I want nothing to do with any. No, of that. you know what? You're pay- <laughs> no, no. You're paid in good vibes. If Venmo had a good vibe depository, that's what we're paying you in and t-shirts. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Finally, did you? So, have you locked in on the Halloween costume yet? No, I I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do that because we're going to be moving down to Florida oh. like right before Halloween. Yeah, Gordo, you got your Halloween costume? I don't. I had an idea, and I'm forget. Oh, what? No, it slipped my mind. I got, I, I, I want it to be like Marissa wants me to do like. Kelsey and Taylor Swift, and I just want no part of dressing oh. up like Travis Kelsey. Oh, I feel like everyone's doing that though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I was gonna go as? Garrett Cole's four fingers. I don't four. understand. I don't know the reference. The, you know what he said? The, oh. he said? the four fingers to Rock Devers. It's like iconic now. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's again. Oh, he went. He went here and. He, like yeah, that. he was like. This. Yeah. It's too now. I'm not going to do it because it's clearly too niche. I mean, it's no, like I thought I was being witty, but no. That that was yeah. I, that was an ultimate sign of respect. I you know there's some hitters uh, that own me. I guess you could say. Um, I don't think I would. I don't think I would ever do that. I think yeah. I'd have to let the manager do it. Well, maybe it's like maybe it's like you're here and you're just like looking at the manager, like, "Come on, man, don't make me be well, look like the dickhead." I think the manager, the manager has to do it. <laughs> like that's the thing. It was, it was. He basically did it, and then Boone had to sign. And Boone was kind of like, "I guess, okay." So, I think that the manager has to do it, doesn't he? I have no idea. I don't either. <laughs> that's what. That's that's, that's what, beyond my knowledge hey, of baseball rules, hey, man. You know who told me that? The owner, the the owner of this LLC of baseballs and boring, he told me that, and you know Joe, it, it may be right or may be wrong, who knows? So, uh, okay, yeah, he um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did Boone already do the walk beforehand and then he just like did that for like no fun, no or... no i think he did it because boone said after he was like eh. like yeah <laughs> i mean he's like yeah, yeah he wanted to do it but okay. anyway terrible halloween costume thank you for talking me out of it i appreciate it <laughs> uh la balucas i uh, we always enjoy talking with you sincerely thank you so much and uh, i hope we can do it again uh as as it goes along and and Take care. I hope that wherever you're staying down in Fort Myers is still in one piece. Um, yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it survived great. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, thoughts out to all the people down in Florida that, you know, had to evacuate and, you know, their houses and communities might be wrecked and, you know, hopefully they can stay safe and build back up because I know it's, it's rough down there in like Tampa and, uh, you know, even further south. So, yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll be heading down there soon. Um, the house, I mean, it looks like nothing happened to it. So I don't know if it was just like the right area where it didn't hit as hard. I have no idea. No. Well, before you know it, all our, all our schlubs will all be down there. Gordo will be asking you, well, you're going to ask him like, who would you, did you ever ask him that? Like, who would you want to be on a, I don't think we did be on a deserted Island Let, with. Let's ask it. Let's ask it. All right, we'll finish it off with that question. Yeah, the good closer here. All right, so you're on a deserted island, mm -hmm. and you get to pick a teammate to be there with you alone. Who are you going to take? Garrett Whitlock. Why Whitlock? He's so responsible. <laughs> we were getting... Ant you're not the first one that said that. I think we got He's like, Whitlocks. he's... I feel like, well, he's like good with like relatively good with like outdoor stuff. He's from the South. Like he's got that vibe. And then um, he's just so on top of his shit and like so responsible that he'll like keep, he'll, he'll be like, Hey, this is what we got to do today. I need you to go and do this. I'm going to do this. Like we're going to survive. Like that's just, that's the feel I get from him. Former, former boy scout too helps. But now oh, the other yeah. end of it, who who's the last guy? The last guy you're taking? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I can tell. Look, this is this is the ultimate. I know who jumped to mine, but Cassis. Who do, who do I? Oh, Cassis. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Give us the reasoning. <laughs> uh because he's he's gonna like he's gonna be doing like Pilates and on the beach the whole time. I'm gonna have to like gather all of our food and I'm gonna figure it all. I'm gonna have to figure out everything. I'm gonna have to be the Garrett Whitlock in that situation. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be. <laughs> there you go. And he's then, gonna and be then... like he's gonna be like oh this is perfect. This is what I want. And he's just gonna like do yoga. Uh, honestly, Gordo, <laughs> those those might that might have been the best package combination of those two questions answered that you had. Excellent job. So hundred percent. And then, yeah. and then he'll eat you. He'll eat you at the end too. Yeah. So yeah. Also, can't, yes. can't overlook that part. Yeah. Um, yeah. I get, I'll ahead. give Pavetta, I'll give Pavetta an honorable mention because he's a good fisherman and you know, you probably have to do some fishing if you're on deserted Island. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm locked. I'm locked to those two answers. I think that's excellent. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what, uh, listen, when you're in Fort Myers, I do you, just give make sure that I do some trick or treating or do something. Do you, just because you're there in Halloween, respect the moment. Dress oh, up. for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dress up. Walk through the Gulf Coast Town Center. I don't know what they do down there, but yeah, I'm you, taking you, I'm taking my girl to. Uh, we're gonna go to like a pumpkin patch and and all that. Carve some pumpkins next week. All right. Yeah. There we go. All right. Well, great things ahead. I appreciate it, Luke. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, guys.